investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm AJ Monte, Chief Technical Analyst with Sticky Trades, and let's get right to work with these charts. If you had a chance to check in with me on Wednesday, I said that we are seeing a rally, and I expected to see a rally across the board by Friday, but I said the Dow needs to be tested and see whether or not we get any follow-through from the Fed announcement that they were going to leave rates unchanged. Well, guess what? We did not have any follow through to the upside. And today we closed with a bearish engulfing candle. Not only that, but we still have this wide divergence from the moving average and the oscillators down below are pivoting lower. You could see that the CCI is taking a dramatic turn lower. And in addition to this pivot, as the price is going up, the volume was dropping. That was the telltale sign that buyers were slowing down. So I am keeping this longer term target down here at 384.72 on the diamonds, but I'm going to put another intermediate term target right down here towards the moving average at 391.51. We could see a little bit of a zigzag ABCD pattern on its way down to this level at 384.72, but for now, Downside target for next week, 391.51. That is DIA. If we look at IWM, you'll know that I had put an upside target from the Wednesday midweek report up there at 208.34. We did hit that. And what happened after we hit that target? Boom. Lower high, lower low. Notice there is no shadow under that candle. Why is that? Because if you look at the minute by minute chart, we closed right on the low and it did not bounce at all. So the sellers ran out of time, and I think they're gonna pick up that selling action on Monday and Tuesday. So I'm keeping this downside target, although it's already been hit, I'm gonna keep that as well, right back down. Let me match this up. That was $200.45. I'm gonna change that to the same thing, 245 cents on the downside. There we go. And then that is matched. So downside target again, right back down to where we were at $200.45. Keep your eye on that CCI. It's my favorite oscillator. And if you're not familiar with that, learn about it through Sticky Trades. I talk about it on almost every single chart. All right, so it's IWM. Looking at the Qs, which is basically the tech sector, I did put a short-term upside target on Wednesday at 445.80. We hit that, and again, we have a lower high, lower low on a drop in volume, very steady drop in volume, telling us the buyers are running out of momentum. We don't have a hinge or a pivot on the stochastic just yet, but we do have that pivot on the CCI. So I'm going right back down. I'm keeping this longer term target in place of 429.91. I don't think that's going to hit by next week, but I do believe eventually it will hit. So keep an eye on that level as well. Looking at SPY, again, I had an upside target from Wednesday that was hit. That upside target was 552.17. I think we're going to go right back down to these levels of 498.67. But in the meantime, like we talked about in the diamonds, I think we could zigzag our way with a possible ABCD pattern on the way down. So the first part from A to B, I'm going to say point B in that four point pattern will most likely bottom out and bounce at 514.48. You see that in the data box there, 514.48. So that is for the spiders. If we look at the VIX, this was very, very interesting. We had a downside target here that was hit at 1371. In the process, we filled this gap at 1301. That was a one penny gap that did fill. And look what happened. Yesterday we had a hammer. Today we have another hammer. But if I zoom in there, you'll see that's a bullish engulfing candle on both of those hammers. So again, as I talk about the trading checklist here in a minute, you'll know that that is very bullish. So the VIX is on its way back up. I believe we have that pivot point that we're looking for. 1588. Just mere minutes ago before the close, 
I was on a Zoom call with one of our VIPs. His name is Zen, and he was talking about his long position. He had bought the May calls and the VIX. I'm not going to give all the details away because I don't want to talk about his account. But I thought that was a good idea because he's giving himself enough time to make money because if the VIX starts to rally, we could see a general sell-off in the market. And you may have heard that old saying, sell in May and go away. Well, I think the sellers are going to come in a little bit earlier than May. We might see that coming into next month. And we might see that also coupled up with maybe some tax selling as people sell out of positions to go pay the tax bill. So that is the target for the VIX. One more time, 1588 to the upside. As I mentioned, we talk about the seven point trading checklist. If you're brand new to Sticky Trade, just send me an email. And that email address is ajmembers, plural, ajmembers at stickytrades.com. And we will send you a PDF copy of this so you could put it on your desk or next to your computer. And then you could plug in with my webinars. If you want to try a two week trial, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. And you could listen to how I analyze stocks using this trading checklist. And I do that all the time. I do it by memory, but you could follow along with me as we look at the type of candle. Remember I talked about the bullish engulfing on the VIX? Well, there you go. You would put a check mark on that bullish column if you were analyzing the VIX. You look at the drop in volume on the way down, that's bullish. You look at the divergences from the moving average. You look for gaps. You look at the stochastic. And of course, you got my favorite commodity channel index, aka the CCI. So let's look at some of the data out there. This is very interesting. This came out recently through Game of Trades. I tell people about Game of Trades all the time. Just find them on Twitter. They put out a lot of good information and charts just like these. Turns out people don't feel like buying homes. Well, on the other side of that coin, people are not feeling too motivated to sell their homes either. And I was talking to Zen, who also has a real estate business in California. He's telling me that inventories have dried up. So this puts a little bit of a wrench in the real estate market. But with the higher mortgage rates and the cost of homes, it's making it harder and harder for the average American to go out there and put a down payment on a home and carry a mortgage. So that is not a good sign for the economy, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Now, for those of you that believe that a rate cut is going to be good for the markets, let me show you something. History has proven that wrong because once the Fed starts to pivot and lower rates, you're going to fall into one of these categories like we've seen before. Historically, when the Fed pivots, stocks crash. And you can see that happened in 2007 and right through 2008, where the markets dropped more than 50% and then finally bottomed out in 2009. And it was in 2009 that started the greatest bull market in American history. But it wasn't until after we had crashed. So if you're looking for another new bull market to come in, I would say you're going to have to wait till after the next crash. And I do believe it's going to happen. We had one of the questions that came up through YouTube. One of the viewers had asked me, why are you so bearish all the time? Well, I'm bearish long term. Hence the reason why I show you this data to throw out these truth bombs so people are more or less thinking about the possibility of downside moves and possible crashes. But overall, our shorter term positions, 95% of them are bullish or have been bullish. And I had a call last night with our equity traders. And for 2024, I don't want to jinx this, but for 2024, every single one of the trade publications that went out to our members was profitable. We didn't have a single losing trade on those stocks. Now, the most recent one that we took is in Ethereum. And I told our members, I said, this is a winning streak that will eventually come to an end. And we're going to have to take a loss eventually. But I said, if you learn how to take losses properly using the 1% rule, you won't suffer a catastrophic loss and give back all your profits. But that's what trading is all about. My audience, I cater to swing traders and option traders. Swing traders are more or less from one week to three weeks and then up to three months in the duration of holding positions like that. So if you're a swing trader or an option trader that more or less adheres to that kind of a time frame, then Sticky Trades is the place for you. Now, finally, last slide right here 
if we continue to see higher inflation down the road and you couple that with recession, that is the worst economic condition you can get into. And that's called stagflation. We saw that in the late 70s and early 80s with Jimmy Carter. And it looks as though we're headed down that path towards stagflation. So be very, very careful expecting the market to rally if the Fed pivots. Remember, I just talked about that right here. We could see what I believe is the beginning of what ultimately will be a crash. And I tell you that because we are prepared for it. Our longer term positions are very bearish. While, like I said before, our shorter term positions are more on the bullish side. But if you want to learn more, go to stickytrades.com, follow the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for liking and sharing. That really, really helps us quite a bit. And your comments, I read every single one of them and I try to answer almost all of them. So stay tuned on the comments page. Thank you for that activity. And I'll talk to you on the next video. So long.